Okay, so this is again number 11 on page 50. Uh, we have Alden is a passenger on a yacht moored 15 miles due north of a straight east-west coastline. So I'm going to start drawing a picture right now. So we have an east-west coastline. Here's our coastline. And he has become ill and has to be taken ashore in a small motorboat, which will meet an ambulance at some point on the shore. The ambulance would then take Alden to a hospital, which is 60 miles east of, a, of the shore point closest to the yacht. So I know that the hospital is east. So I'm going to go put a point out here. Label that H. or west, if you were going in the correct usual pattern of how our society works for east and west. <laughs> so I'll just put a point out here. Thank you, Daniel. And I erased that. You frazzled me. So, what's funny, Daniel, this morning when I did this problem, I drew it out here. I said, no, that's not east. The right's not east. That's west. I'm not sure what I was doing. So, we'll call that the hospital. That's east. Okay, and then the, we'll call this point on the left here then, that's the point closest to the yacht. So we'll call this 60 miles. All right, so that means the yacht now is going to be, we'll call this, and I know it's not the scale, but that's Alden, he's right there on the yacht which is 15 miles due north. So that's 15 miles. So again, the question here is if he's there, we know the motorboat can only go 20 miles per hour, and it's going to meet somewhere on this shoreline. So he could go right to right, he could go motorboat straight to hospital. That might work, but if he does that, he's only going to go 20 miles per hour this whole way. He could go motorboat directly to the shore at 20 miles per hour. And then the rest of the 60, he takes the ambulance at 90 miles per hour. Ambulance is flying. So we could do that. In fact, we could probably, I wouldn't say more easily, but we could definitely, it would be easy to calculate, okay, 20 miles per hour for 15 miles. 60 miles per hour, or 60 miles at 90 miles per hour, get a time it takes to go straight. Okay, and then we could also calculate the distance from here, eight, A to H, with Pythagorean theorem, and just say 20 miles per hour, this whole distance. But what it's saying is that the motorboat wants to minimize this time. So it's going to happen somewhere as a combination of both. Somewhere in the middle here, I don't know, it could be right here, it could be over here, it could be over here the motorboat's going to go to give us the shortest amount of time. So we want to use the math for that. So let's plot a point here, and it could be anywhere on here. I'm just going to put a arbitrary point. I'm just going to put it right here. And just say that, that that's the point. And just imagine that can slide anywhere. And that just happens to be our minimized point. Again, that's not to scale or anything. That's just our minimized point. So I'm just going to go right there. Okay? And we're going to call the distance from this point at the shore to here, we'll call that x. If that's x, what's the rest of the distance going to be? 60 minus, x. 60 minus x. So out of all these numbers and, and uh, expressions on here, how far is the ambulance going to travel? 60 minus, 60 minus x. He's just traveling this distance from where, wherever this point, this point right here is where the boat reaches the shore. So from here to here, that's where the ambulance is going to go. How are we going to figure out how far the motorboat actually goes? No, no, the motorboat, if, if he went straight to shore, if the motorboat went straight to shore, he would go 15. But he's going to go this route. 15. Right, so we could use Pythagorean theorem, right? Okay, and I know it's, been, it's rusty. Pythagorean theorem is rusty for two weeks, but can we do that? How would we write that in one expression? I'll give you a hint. Start with square root. Square root of 
15 squared exactly plus x squared. So that's the distance the ambulance, or sorry, the motorboat goes. So here's the motorboat, and here's the ambulance. And now, just to make things a little bit more clear, I'm going to write here that this distance, 60 minus x, that is at 90 miles per hour. And then this distance right here, that is going to be at 20 miles per hour. Questions so far? I'm going to pause this for a second. Okay, I went ahead and I used our previous diagram. Okay, I have all the information I want. And now it's the side I have to think about, okay, we know that, and I'm use a different color here. Ew. Just purple. All right. So we know that distance equals rate times time, right? Okay, distance equals rate times time. We have a distance, and we have a rate, and we want to find time. So how can I adjust this distance equals rate times time to use distance and rate. So what would time equal? Time equals d over r. Time equals d over r. So it's not multiplied by the rate, it's divided by. Okay? So if I want my total time here, my total time, I'm going to make one function and then we're going to use a calculator. So I have one function for total time. Time equals I'm going to take the motorboat first. Here is the motorboat distance. So let's write that down. Motorboat distance, square root, 15 squared plus x squared. And then we could divide that by the rate the motorboat's going, 20 miles per hour. And that expression right there will give you the time for the motorboat. Yes, so I'm going to do the total time. This capital T, I'm just calling the total time. So, so that's my motorboat time. If I add that to my ambulance time, which is 60 minus x is my distance for my ambulance, divided by the 90, that gives us our ambulance time. So again, I have my total time is my motorboat time plus my ambulance time. Okay, so far that makes sense? Okay. Okay, now that we have our time function, this function should give us the, well, this gives us a, a graph of the time for our motorboat. Here's our expression for our time for our motorboat, and then our time for our ambulance. Add them together, have the total time. Um, we're just going to plug it right in the calculator. I just took some pictures of our, some, some screen pictures, some screen captures of our calculator here. So first thing I did went Y1 here, and I went ahead and typed in our function. Make sure I'm using the parentheses for the numerators within the fractions right here and here. Once I did that, I could have pushed graph. Um, a lot of times I'll do zoom fit. Zoom button is right here in the middle, and I'll do zoom fit which is zero, to get a graph. And then the graph, if I go down here to my graph picture, it could look, be zoomed in or out. Uh, but this time what I did, I went straight to my window. Windows this button right here. And now I'm looking at this screen. So the reason I did this window is because I looked at my graph here, my initial actually diagram, and I see that the x minimum, since my x is this length right here, how much basically the motorboat cuts off along the shoreline, that minimum is zero. It could cut off nothing and go straight to the shore here. The x maximum that it could cut off is 60 because it could go all the way from a to h and cut off 60. So I know that's, that's a good window for my x min and max on my scale of 10 just to, so I had some nice num numbers here. And then my y value my y value is my time. And I just guessed some, somewhere between 0 and 2 hours. 
I had a scale of one. So when I did this, I went ahead and pushed graph from here. Here is the window that I got. I didn't get this little minimum thing at the bottom yet. I'll show you how we got that in a second. I just got this graph. When I saw this graph, I saw that there had to be a minimum down here somewhere. It was definitely a curve. It wasn't a straight line. There's a minimum down here somewhere, and I wanted to find that. So I went second calc, and that's right here. So you push the blue button or yellow button, second, it's down here somewhere, and you push the trace button, and that gives you the calculate menu, and then it is option three. So you can either scroll down to three or just push three, go minimum, and then the calculator asks us for a few things that I didn't capture on the screen. So it asked me to take my little cursor right here, I think I started up here, and I got to scroll left. So I push left and it kind of moves here and it says left bound. And I just make sure I go left at that bottom. So I went over here, push enter. Then I went right bound, it asked for me four. So I went right, and you can go anywhere right at that bottom, push enter. And then guess, so I guess where the bottom was, push enter right there. And then once I got there, it gave me my minimum of 3.41 and 1.39, which gives me my 3.41 is the distance here for x that would give me the minimum time. And here is actually my minimum time of 1.39. Okay, so using the calculator, we got our x distance for the minimum time to be 3.41. So I'm going to write that here, 3.41. Now the original question wasn't how far you know, along the shore does he want to be. The initial question was what? What does it say? No? The angle. What's the angle down shore that he should aim to give us our minimum time? Okay, so we already figured out that, you know, using our calculator and minimums here, that 3.41 is our shortest, is the distance we should go to, you know, from our perpendicular angle. And then we also figured out that the shortest time, that time, ended up being 1.39791-ish. Okay? So that's our minimum time. So now we want to know what this angle up here is. We'll call it theta. It's our very typical, it's a bad theta. Let's erase that. Can I erase that? Yeah. So our very typical angle measurement variable, theta, it's a Greek letter. And so we have, we want to find that angle theta. So how do we find that angle? So an inverse trig function. So I'd agree with that. So which inverse trig function do we want to use? Well, if we had, yeah, we could use any of them if we had a number for the distance here, but we don't have that. We could find that, but I think we just should just use our two points. So what, what pieces do we have according to this angle? What are these two? Adjacent, opposite. So yeah, I would use a tan function. So the inverse tan, or arc tan, of what? Which one's the opposite side? 3.41 over 15. So we actually do that calculator-wise, make sure we're in degree mode, and we get 12.81 degrees. And that is our answer for the angle he should take right there. Questions?